When we pass alternating current through any resistor or say a bulb, then the power dissipated in that resistor, which I'm gonna show as the brightness of the bulb, will keep fluctuating because the current is alternating. And it's for that reason, most of the times we are interested in the average power that gets dissipated. And we saw in a previous video, to calculate average power, all you need is an RMS value of the current. If you know what the RMS value of the current is, we can just say average power equals I square times R. Or if you know the RMS voltage, we can say it's V square over R. Now the goal of this video is to figure out the RMS values for sinusoidal currents or voltages. And uh, we're gonna derive, we're gonna prove that the RMS value for sinusoids turns out to be the peak value divided by root two. Before we begin, if this looks new to you or you feel like, what's going on? What is this RMS business? What are we talking about? Uh, don't worry, we've talked a lot about this in our previous video on RMS values and power dissipated. So feel free to go back and check that out. Okay, let's begin. So our goal is to figure out what the RMS value of the current is. And I'm coloring them because there are three operations. What does RMS mean? R stands for root, so you have to take the square root square root of the mean. And I'm just gonna write mean this way. This uh, brackets means calculating mean, meaning you calculate various, add up all the different values and divide by n. I'm just gonna, for simplicity, for short shortcut, write it this way. Mean of what? Of squares of the currents. So I'm gonna write it this way. I squared, where I is given over here. It's a sinusoid, okay? And what I mean by this, let me just write that somewhere over here. What I mean by this is, what I mean by this is, you just take different values of i, so i1 squared plus i2 squared, and so on, and then divide that by n. I just didn't want to write the whole thing over here, so that's what I'm writing. Okay, so there are three steps involved. First, take my current, square it, then take the mean value, and then finally, take the square root of it, and then I'll get my R IRMS. All right, so let's do it stepwise. So let's first do the first step. I think that's one of the easiest steps. Square my current. So that's easy. I just have to square this number, this value. So what will I get? If I square that, I get I naught square times sine squared omega t. Yay, first step done. <laughs> okay. Next, I think that's the most difficult step. Let's calculate the mean of the current. I think this is the most difficult step because the third step is just to carry the, calculate the square root. That's also something we can do. So the, calculating the mean is the harder part. Okay, so we'll have to calculate the mean or the average value of this number. That's going to be I naught square sine square omega t. Now this calculation, you can imagine it to be something like at some time t1, I'm calculating I naught square sine square omega T1. Plus at some time T2, I naught square sine square omega T2, and so on and so forth, and then dividing the whole thing by N. Now one thing you can see when I do that, I naught square is a common. Everywhere I naught, there'll be an I naught square, I naught square, and I can take that common out. And therefore I can always write this, I can say that this is I naught square times the mean value of sine square omega T. Does that make sense? because I naught squared is gonna be the same everywhere. And the question now is what is this? And this is the hardest part actually of the whole calculation. This requires, you know, this requires mathematics because it's a continuous function. And so you can't just say I1, I2, I3, I4 conceptually, that's what you're doing. But if you're doing it continuously, you have to do an integral. But luckily we're dealing with sinusoids. There's a logical way of figuring this out without any integral. Only works for specific functions, it'll work for signs. And I'm gonna show you in a, in, a, in a minute or two that if you calculate the average value, it turns out to be half. You have to wait for it, I'll, I'll show you that in a, in a second. In fact, both you and I can do it together. We can actually together without integration uh, see this happening, so wait for it. So, so this will be the average value, that's the step two. And now step three, we can take the square root. Square root of the average or the mean of the square of the current. So that's gonna be the square root of this number, I naught square by two. And what does that have, what does that equals? That equals I naught 
divided by root 2. And there we go. We have proved that for sinusoids, the RMS value equals the peak value divided by root 2. And uh, okay, you can also write this as I naught times 1 over root 2 is about 0 0.707. So you can also remember this. Uh, you can also think of it this way. All right, now the last thing, and I think is the most interesting thing, is to actually convince ourselves that the average value or a mean value of sine square is half. So let's now just focus on that. Let's convince ourselves of just that. So I'm gonna dim everything else. So we need to prove this. Let me keep this up. Let me move this thing also up. Okay, so here's my first question to you. Forget about sine square. What do you think is the mean value of just sine? If I take any sine function, say sine of omega t, what do you think is the average value of just that? What's that going to be? Well, because sine is a symmetric function, I can say if I take the mean value over say one complete cycle, then when I add up all the values of i's over here and over here, they're gonna give me zero. Because for every positive value over here, I will find a negative value. For i naught, I have minus i naught. For some i1 here, I have some minus i1 here. For some i2 here, I have some minus i2 here. So they will all cancel out and I'll get zero. So in general, we can say whenever you have a sinusoidal function, sinusoidal function, the average value of a sinusoid in general we can say is th at the center. Now of course, here the center was zero because the sinusoid is centered around zero and that's why this one's uh, mean value turns out to be zero. But in general, you can have sinusoids however you want and we can say that its mean value or average value has to be at the center. And the beauty is we will see that when you square a sinusoidal function, we will end up with another sinusoidal function. And what I mean by sinusoid is you're gonna get a similar function, just maybe stretched a little bit or squeezed or maybe moved up or down, but it's gonna stay a sinusoid, which means we're, all we have to do to calculate the mean value is look at the center. Okay, so the first step is I wanna convince you that the sine square is in fact a sinusoid and draw a graph for that. But how do I do that? How do I draw? Just by looking at this, how do I draw a graph for sine squared? It's not all that easy, right? Well, we can use a trigonometric relation. You might recall the trigonometric relation cos two theta equals one minus two sine square theta. And why I like this is because from this, now I can say, hey, sine square theta has to be, if I just rearrange this, has to be mi one minus cos two theta divided by two. When I look at this and I say, ah. So if you take a sine square, it's the same thing as writing this function. And notice this function has a cos, not cos square, cos. And the graph of cos is gonna be same. It's just shifted a little up, you know, shifted a little bit left. So when I draw cos, I get a sinusoid. If I add something to a cos, I will get a sinusoid. <laughs> if I divide some number by cos, I get a sinusoid, <laughs> okay? So you can kind of see this whole thing, once we graph it, will still be a sinusoid, and as a result, we can just look at its center once we graph it, and that will give us the mean value. So let's go ahead and together graph this. So the way I'm gonna graph this, wait, wait, I'm jumping ahead, I'm so excited. So from this, let's first write, this means sine square omega t can be written as one minus cos two omega t divided by two. Okay, now let's graph this. So first we'll graph what cos two omega t looks like, and then we'll do minus cos two omega t, then we'll add one to it, then we'll divide this whole thing by two. Let's, let's do it together. So here's our axis. I want you to first think about what cos two omega t would look like. Just graph that, cos two omega t. It's going to be a sinusoid, uh, and you might remember when you, when you, cos zero is one, so it starts over here. So can you just imagine what that graph is gonna look like? Pause and think about it. All right, here we go. This is what cos two omega t would look like. So it swings between plus one and minus one. It starts at plus one and then swings like a sinusoid. And you can see because it is two omega t, the frequency is double and therefore it's oscillating much faster and that's why it's kind of like shrunk in the x-axis or along the time axis. Does that make sense compared to this one? And if you're logically thinking about why it is shrinking, well, for now I can say it's a trigonometric relationship, but maybe later on we might be able to make sense of why it is, the frequency has become twice. But anyways, this is cos. Now, 
let's draw minus cos. What would minus cos look like? Well, just take every point and multiply by minus one. That means this point, when I multiply minus one, would come down. This point, when I multiply minus one, will come up, and so on. So the whole thing will flip. Can you see? Can you imagine? Here goes. It's gonna flip like this. This is minus cos two omega t. It's still a sinusoid. Okay, now let's add one to this. What will happen? Again, I want you to pause and think about it. Add one and divide by two. Imagine what's gonna happen. Okay, let's see. When I add at every point, uh, the, the value of every point increases by one. So this point, which is at minus one, when you add one comes to zero. This point comes to one. This point comes to two. So the whole graph shifts up, shifts up and this will come to zero and this will come to two. So it'll look like this. This is one minus cos two omega t. Ooh, we are coming close. This is still a sinusoid. Finally, let's divide the whole thing by two. What will happen? Well, every value gets divided by two, so this will stay zero. This divided by two makes it one, so it's kind of like gets compressed along the vertical. And so this will come to one, and so you can kind of imagine this is what it will look like. And again, compressing a sinusoid will still give us a sinusoid. So this is still a symmetric sinusoidal graph. And we have gotten one minus cos two omega t, we have graphed it, so that means this is the graph of sine square omega t. And you're seeing right in front of your eyes, it's a sinusoid, and therefore I can say the mean value of this should be right in between. And where is the center of this? It's between zero and one, and that is half, booyah! Therefore, mean value of sine square is half. When I first learned about this, my mind was blown because I thought integration was the only way. In general, you have to integrate, but because sinusoids are such nice functions, we can do it this way. Beautiful, right? And finally, can you sort of see why the frequency of this sine square is twice the frequency of this one? Well, that's because when you square this, you see this lobe, which is down over here, also comes back on top. And that's why you end up getting a sign that looks like this. And that's why the frequency becomes double. But the main point was we proved that sine square mean function is half. And so if I go back, we've conclusively proved that the RMS values of any sinusoid is gonna be the peak value divided by root two, whether it's a current or a voltage or some other quantity.